Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Now the boy, Samuel, was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Then Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him. He said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. And Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God descending and ascending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Well, I... I think it's safe to say, although we've said it many times, that uh, this past year was, has been something that we never really anticipated taking place. It wasn't something we were prepared for. And we keep saying that over and over again, and we keep wondering uh, how many times we're going to have to say, well, gee, I, I certainly didn't expect that. Right? And it just seems that even though calendar year 2020 is over, into the beginning of 2021, we're still experiencing some of that hangover with uh, some of these events in the world that are still events that are unexpected. And uh, for instance, we know that the uh, COVID-19 pandemic is, is still raging. We know that the numbers are continuing to increase. We know that people are still dying. We've also experienced recently some violence in the nation's capital. And these events just seem to keep happening and happening and happening. And as a worshiping community, the challenge in that is that we are called to preach the gospel. And gospel literally means good news. So we are called as Christians to look for that good news. But where is the good news? I think that's a question that we returning to. And this year is certainly a year that we will remember forever. There's a chemical reaction in our human brains that takes place when some kind of tragedy strikes. I remember when I was a young boy, the adults in my life would tell me over and over again that they remembered exactly where they were when they had heard the news that President John Fitzgerald Kennedy had been assassinated. And I had my own experience of that a number of years later when I heard the news of the first plane hitting the tower of the World Trade Center on September 11th, 20 years ago. I could tell you exactly where I was and exactly what I was doing when I heard that news. And the reason for that is there is a chemical reaction that takes place in our brains that kind of imprints those tragic events in our minds. And we pay close attention to all the things that are taking place around us. So this year, and especially the events that took place over the past couple of weeks, uh, will be seared into our memories. And I think it's safe to say that we will all remember 2020 and the first part of 2021 for our entire lives. But as I said before, it's 
our duty, our responsibility, if you will, as Christians to preach the good news. So we need to look for where that good news is. And I'm happy to say that we're here at a place here at All Saints Phoenix where we live into that good news. We are a resilient congregation, and you are resilient in your call to follow Jesus Christ. Now, you know that I am the Associate Rector for Pastoral Care here at All Saints, but what exactly does that mean? I think we have a tendency in our minds to picture what pastoral care is, right? Many of us have an image of uh, pastoral care being a conversation uh, between a parishioner and a member of clergy in a time of crisis, for instance. Often someone may be ill or someone may be dying. Someone may have just recently died. And we think of a situation where the pastoral person is having a conversation with the parishioner. And that certainly is pastoral care, but pastoral care is oh so much more than that. In fact, by its very nature, anything that takes place here at church is pastoral care. That includes, firstly, the liturgy. The liturgy is pastoral care. The prayers that we pray together are pastoral in nature. They bring us comfort, they bring us peace. Hopefully, the sermon is pastoral care. Hopefully, the preacher is able to provide you with some words of comfort. The music is pastoral care. The music evokes emotions. It helps us to fully experience the liturgy more deeply. It's pastoral in its very nature. And in fact, the liturgical calendar and the lectionary is set up in a way to be pastoral. If you pay close attention, you'll notice that week in and week out, we don't always have a happy, joyful gospel. Sometimes we have a gospel reading that makes us feel sad or makes us feel upset. And that's very intentional on the part of the drafters of the lectionary because they designed the lectionary around our human lives and to correspond with our human experiences. Because the reality is, in life, we're not always happy, and we're not always sad, but sometimes we fluctuate. We reach everywhere in between. And the lectionary is set up intentionally to do that. It is pastoral in nature. It helps us to feel human. Now that not only, by the way, includes the things that the staff here at church do, it also includes the things that you do as the church, because of course, You are the members of the Church of God. You make up the church. And so all of those interactions that you have are pastoral in nature. We have many formal groups here at All Saints. and I'm very proud that we have these groups. For instance, the Community of Hope makes countless phone calls throughout the year, countless visits during a normal year to bring communion, to share prayers, to share scripture with those who are unable to attend here in person. We have an amazing team of lectors and vergers and altar guild members and so many people who who are behind the scenes making sure that our parish is operating seamlessly. We have a beautiful prison ministry. We have so many ministry teams that do such amazing work to share the good news of Jesus Christ with those around. Well, how about those who are not part of a formal team? How about those times when you simply decide, I haven't heard from my friend in a while. I'm going to pick up the telephone. I'm going to call that person. I just want to see how that person is doing. That, my friends, is perhaps the most beautiful component of pastoral care reaching out to show someone that you care. Every time you do that, you are providing pastoral care to someone in the community. I'd like you to know, as the associate rector for pastoral care, 
that I see that in action. And I appreciate that. And I'm so proud of you for the work that you've been doing during this pandemic, the work that you were doing before the pandemic started, and I'm confident will continue when the pandemic is over. So as a worshiping community, let's continue in that amazing and beautiful resilience. We continue to denounce things like inappropriate behavior, such as violence. We continue to move forward and promote positive behavior and loving one another and being pastoral with one another. And we bring that resiliency forward as a worshiping community. And that, my friends, is how we continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ, to share the love of God with those around us, and we continue to be a beacon of hope and love, not just in Phoenix, and not just in the Diocese of Arizona, but hopefully in the entire world, because All Saints is a special place. I'm blessed to be here and you are the people who make All Saints such a special place. Thank you for being the people of God here at All Saints. Amen. And now let's affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people, Form 4. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, 
and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide us in the process of discerning a new rector for our parish. Give us wisdom and courage to find a caring pastor for our people, to serve you and a world in need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We remember those who have asked for our prayers. Since this service has been recorded, the current list of names is found at the end of your bulletin. These people are also prayed for daily by name through our observance of the daily offices of morning and evening prayer and by the Daughters of the King. We pray for all those impacted by COVID-19 and especially the medical care workers who are putting their lives at risk to protect us. We pray for all the men and women in the uniformed and armed services and their families. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the parish of St. Mary's in Phoenix. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of Australia. We also pray for Navajo land and our new companion diocese of Western Mexico, along with our companion parish and school, St. Paul's in Haiti. For All Saints Episcopal Day School, our students, teachers, administrators, and support staff. For all who are visiting us today, may they find our community a place of welcome and spiritual nourishment. Almighty God, by the hand of Moses, your servant, you led your people out of slavery and made them free at last. Grant that your church, following the example of your prophet, Martin Luther King, may resist oppression in the name of your love and may secure for all your children the blessed liberty of the gospel of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and by what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us say together the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. And now we collect all our prayers this morning as we say together the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen.
May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah.